Now, let me just quickly clear something for you because there's some of you, there's something, there's some things you've never heard me say. And um, that's why I told you to be in this meeting. Because I said, there are some things we, we share in meetings like this that we only share once in about 10 years. We can't talk about them every day. We can't, not even every week or every month. We only discuss them maybe once in about 10 years. Now, you know, the Bible talks about the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ, we will all be called to face him one by one. And at that judgment seat of Christ, you are to be rewarded for your works. So everyone who is listed is called at the judgment seat of Christ. That's a different register. It's not the same register that you have that's called the book of life. Now what about Old Testament folks? Oh yes, they will be called too. There's a register. Malachi speaks of the register. So, they're going to be called. But this register doesn't deal with whether or not you are supposed to be in the kingdom. As your name is called, you come and say, you tell before all the saints what you did for the kingdom of God. And before you speak, your whole life will be shown before everybody. And everyone can see your life on a screen. The Bible says, if you've done wrong, you suffer loss. For example, when someone is shown what he's supposed to get, his calling will be shown. God's purpose for his life will be shown. His rewards will be shown. Then, as it plays out, everything that was not of God in his life, particularly in his motives for what he did, as they come up, the rewards will be going down. If he was supposed to have 10 cities, they will go to seven. <laughs> And then there's another thing there where he was supposed to do something, he didn't do it, and that was supposed to aim him another city, he goes down to six. Then there's another thing there, he was supposed to act and get another reward, he didn't do it, he goes down to four. And then it goes down to three, two, and one, and uh, the final count, he doesn't even get a city. The Bible talks about this. As you're called one by one, everybody will be called. Everyone will be called. Everyone will be called. And when you are called, everybody else will be there listening and watching. You say, ah, by the time they get to my turn, forget it. It's not a day. Do you understand? It, it's just day. You, you understand what I'm talking about? There's not going to be a night. So it's going to be timeless. You will all be there. And everybody will just know you. <laughs> you can't come and we will just know you. We'll just know you. Didn't you see that, that Peter, James, and John immediately recognized Elijah and Moses? And they didn't live in the same generation. There was no introduction. Moses and Elijah appeared and the disciples just recognized them. Peter spoke up, he said, Master, let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He didn't have any introduction. So we're just going to know our heirs. Just call you by your first name. So as they call you, you stand there, we all know you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. So he says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 
Oh, what life should we live? The Bible says, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be? I know you, many of you live far away. Now we'll have to round off tonight. In your life, make up your mind to be relevant to the kingdom of God. Become relevant. Anything you're asked to do in the house of God, let me tell you, be wise and do it with everything in you. Why? God will not call you on the last day about something they told you to do in the political arena in the world. God will not call you and ask you about anything that had to do with your estate. He will not call you about any of those things. He's going to call you in connection with the kingdom of God. That's what he's going to do. The Bible shows us. He's going to call you in connection with the kingdom of God. Whatever else you did in this life, it is how that thing was connected to the kingdom of God that is going to ask you. You know, we tell people, win your family to Christ. They think it's a joke. Win your family to Christ because God's not going to be asking you how you took care of your family, about anything else, he will say, how were you a witness of the kingdom to your family? How? Now notice his connection, or his, his connection and construction. When you study in the, in the first epistle of uh, Timothy, the fifth chapter, where he talks about that... Uh, 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 we should take care of our families. He said something. He said, the man who will not take care of his family is worse than an infidel. Look at the connection. He says, it's worse than a, non, a, a non-believer, an infidel. What does a believer do? And what does a non-believer do? A believer has a witness. A non-believer disputes it. So he's telling you that when you take care of your family, you are a witness of the kingdom. You are bearing good witness of the kingdom. And that if you don't do it, you are worse than somebody who's against the kingdom. So you see the connection. If God has given you abilities for a business, or a good job, you got a good employment, whatever it is. The question that God has on his mind is how did that benefit the kingdom of God? How? You have to understand the passion of God for the kingdom. That's what matters. What do you want to do in this life that has not been done before? What do you want to do? So make up your mind. Become, see, just make up your mind. Be decisive. Make up your mind. It's one way. You become passionate about Jesus and his kingdom. Understand your personal responsibility. For the Bible says, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He says, every one of us will. Every one of us will. Then he says, to receive the things done in the body, whether it be good or evil. So you receive. At the end, it says, then shall every man have praise of God. So some are going to be praised more than others. 
Would you like to be praised for getting there? No, think about it. The only praise some people will get is welcome, it's good, you made it. You know, like some people, maybe you say, Oh, you're coming from afar. What did you come with? I, I came with myself. You came with yourself. Hallelujah. So God's going to be asking you, what did you come with? What did you arrive heaven with? He wants to see how you influenced many other lives. There are going to be lots and lots of people, like some of you who are responsible for absolute realities, to other cities, other countries, some people you will never meet in this world. But you've been responsible for getting the material across to them. God, when he calls that up, your points go up. But if God laid it in your heart and he said, buy a hundred copies, and you say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that must be the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On that day, you'll be amazed. Everybody will be there. Everybody will hear how God spoke it. Son, buy a hundred copies of Rhapsody for free distribution everybody will hear it when God spoke to you listen Jesus said the things that he said to you in secret will be shouted on house stops in other words everybody's gonna hear so then we hear it as we all sitting or standing actually before him we hear his voice to you son 100 copies of Rhapsody then we hear your reply that must be the devil Then you see, from whatever reward it was going to be, it just goes down. Son, send 25,000 to your mother. She's praying and asking God for a miracle. Send her 25,000 now. You say, can't do that. Then we look. Uh -huh. Then you say, but I, I didn't know it was God. I, I didn't know. And then the voice will answer you. Did the devil ever do good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Bible tells us let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus what kind of mind was he the Bible tells us that he despised the shame of the cross why because of the glory that was to follow I always remember a brother there are several others who have done about the same thing we were preparing for a program at the stadium. And he said to himself, what will I give? He had just been paid some money, which he wanted to use to furnish his house. You know what he did? He decided not to furnish his house and gave that money for the program at the stadium. I heard it from the one who went to visit him. They got there and said, no furniture. He said, no. <gasps> After all the promotion you got, because he was promoted at work. He said, ah, no, don't worry about that. And when he pressed him for that, no, you have to. He said, no, I wanted to make sure we finished the program at the stage. And he gave that money. Let me tell you, in the churches, it is not those people that pack the biggest cars that probably give the most money. When people wonder about all the money that's given in the ministry, it's those whose hearts are sold out to God. Did you know that when we were preparing for a certain program, a brother moved out of his duplex 
Hello. A brother moved out of his duplex into a flat so he could get the money off it and give it. Meanwhile, you have another one crying, Oh God, move me into a duplex. Oh God, move me into a duplex. Someone moved out of the duplex into a flat so that souls could be saved. If you are playing about the gospel, don't think everybody is playing like you. I'm telling you. Don't think everybody else is playing like you. Some are very serious. So while you are planning for your next most expensive shoes, how much for those shoes? 150,000. You are excited. It is okay. Go and compete with your mates. That's what you're trying to do. The question is, what have you done for the kingdom? That day, all of us will see your Maori shoes. And how it was only 20,000 you gave to God. Let me tell you. Before ever, you let yourself go living on expensive things, make sure that you have given much more than that in the kingdom of God. Live on the extras. Make the kingdom of God your major responsibility. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It is too important. It is too important. That's what we do. So when you see us like this, it is, it is the extra, the leftover that you're actually seeing. God blesses us with a lot of money. But that's the reason we also bless the work of the ministry. Are you still there? I want to ask a question. Um, how much do you spend in a month for telephone calls? Who can, who can give me his own record? How much do you spend in a month for telephone calls? Anybody inside? How many of you spend up to 5,000 in a month for telephone calls? You spend up to 5,000 Naira in a whole month for telephone calls. Do you spend up to five? Can I see your hand up? Whether five and above, let me see your hand. Wave it like this. Don't do it like this, I want to see your hand up. Okay, how many of you spend up to 2,000 in a month for telephone bills? I mean by your pain as you go. <laughs> Let me see your hand up. 2,000 and above. Raise your hand. How many of you spend up to 1,000 for telephone calls? Okay. As from 1,000 upward, including 2, 5, etc. 1,000 upward. Let me see your hand up. That's great. Put down your hand. If your handset were stolen with the SIM, um, would you spend that money? You'll have to get another one. Like some of you, you've gotten about three or four handsets already since January. How much is Rhapsody? Rhapsody of Realities. One copy. One, one fifty. Some of the phone calls you make are not useful. They are not financially viable. Not financially rewarded, but you're just making the calls. If you were smart and you saved the money of your telephone bills and decided to buy some more copies, for somebody to be blessed 
God can help you get a telephone call that will change your business forever. One telephone conversation can change your financial status for life. And it takes the Holy Ghost to make it happen. You say, how? That's his job. All the people you've been calling, say, how are you, how are you? I just want to know whether you are there. Okay, bye. <laughs> and then you pay for it. <laughs> and then you don't get anything. But one call, if you save the money off your telephone bills and decided to give it to God, I'm just showing you how to miraculously ride with God and have your life completely altered. And then those who used to know you will be wondering what happened to you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I pray for your children tonight. Thank you for blessing us with the word of God. Oh, that the word will remain in them, producing results every day. Strengthen their spirit with might by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Heavenly Father. They are protected in their going out and coming in. And tonight, as they leave this place, they carry your divine presence to affect the world. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.